Caddis Maximus here. Here's a uh, quick review and comparison of some various deflecting beam torque wrenches. I actually had done a review of this SK deflecting beam torque wrench, but I hadn't actually done a review or comparison of the other ones that I had. This will represent, give you a basic representation of what to expect in quarter inch, three eighths, and half inch drive deflecting beam torque wrenches. Deflecting beam door wrenches have a few advantages. One, they're very cost effective, they are cheap. Two, they'll hold their accuracy basically forever as long as you don't drop them or bend the beams or anything. Dropping them can cause an issue because it can cause a slight bend or even a bit of work hardening in the, hand, in the uh, main bar. And even though it doesn't sound likely, it's actually pretty surprising. And in testing, I've been able to show people, you know, ones that have been dropped a couple of times uh, do tend to read low. That's what ends up happening. It's uh, that they apply more torque than what the dial is actually reading. And that's irrespective if the needle gets bent and maybe rubbing on the, uh, the actual display itself or the, I guess that would be called the <laughs> gauge face right there. And if you do run in the one where the needle is rubbing a little bit, like say on this Thorson, it's really not a big deal. Uh, instead of trying to bend the needle back like on this where it just barely touches, it's just hardly making any friction. And it's really not that big of a deal on uh, these style of torque wrenches. Now how these work, of course, is that you have a thick beam and you have a handle. The reason that they have this special handle is so it's held and the pressure is put on in a certain way because the way these are calculated is the specific material, its diameter, its heat treatment, and then its length. And so it's real important. The reason that they have these handles is because if you hold, say, you're holding it up here or down in some other area, you're not, you're choking up essentially on the bar. And so it's not able to bend as far as uh, it needs to. And so they'll tend to read low. And so that's why they tend to have these kind of funky handles to really ensure that the pressure is put on in a very consistent fashion so that you actually get a calibrated and accurate reading. Now, these are all American made units and they're pretty nice. That being said, there are always some issues, which I just noticed before I was doing this review, is this SK, many of them have multiple uh, scales on them, such as foot-pounds, and I believe meter-kilograms, although the SK, they had a gross error, that says meter-kilo-pounds, there's not even a U. And even if there was a U, I don't believe that a meter-kilo-pound is actually a proper measurement, I believe it is meter-kilograms, such as on this Thorson. Uh, the source of was made in Dallas, Texas. You actually don't see a lot of Texas, Texan made tools. But this one is pretty nice because it has three ranges, both foot pounds, inch pounds, and meter kilograms. So it's actually pretty nice. The other thing is this has a scale up to 150 foot pounds. That would be on the high end of a deflecting beam torque wrench. Most of them are going to be like this SK where they go up to 100 foot pounds. 3H ones are, of course, for lighter grade torques, such as valve cover bolts and that kind of stuff. And they usually read in inch pounds. And this one would be Newton meters and inch pounds, which is kind of nice. I like on this Craftsman that they have the two scales on the two different shelves here. So it's really easy to read each one. And that's one thing that is, a, you know, a disadvantage is one, deflecting beam torque wrenches are large. Two, they don't have ratcheting heads, which can make them challenging. And three, you really need to look at them square because if you're looking at them off to the side, you'll get a much different reading just because of the, the angle that you're looking at them with versus when you're staring straight down, just like any other kind of analog gauge. And so that's why they're not used very often, but they are very handy. They obviously will read in both directions and um, they're very easy to use. You don't have to turn up any micrometer handles or adjust any knobs or nothing. You simply put on the socket and then put it on the fastener and pull the handle until the needle says the value that you want it to, which is actually pretty nice. Another thing to mention is I've gotten into the habit, the way I've seen all of these are be designed is that the shelf is, or the gauge surface is designed so you can just put them upside down. What that does is it helps, you know, keeps the socket straight up and prevents you from accidentally dropping or having something ding the needle arm, which is going to be the more susceptible to getting bent or dinged up. And so that's one thing to mention about deflecting beam torque wrenches. And they do make them very small, such as this little industrial right here. This is a inch pound. 
And what's interesting is they don't use the wobble handle. They just have this little kind of finger cut out and that's where you hold on to. So this kind of shows that it's the little wobble on the handle. I'm not exactly sure why they have that besides maybe make it easier to grip. But when they get the small ones like quarter inch, they don't use that little wobble handle anymore. And as you can see on an inch pound one, this only goes up to 120 inch pounds. So about eight foot pounds, about seven foot pounds, I should say. Um, indeed has some very thin beams. So obviously this is a wrench where if you just had this sitting in your toolbox and you're hucking big vice grips and big sockets and ratchets on top of it, you just ruin it. And so that's one thing to keep in mind is that deflecting beam torque wrenches, like all torque wrenches, need to be properly treated. But these really, you know, don't really can't handle being dropped or having a lot of things thrown on them just because of the way you can uh, damage the, the indicator needle in particular because it's so thin. Another thing that's just kind of amusing, like on this SK, is it says uh, special pivoted. Or on the Craftsman, it says torque wrench. Um, and if you, if you didn't know that this was a torque, I guess you wouldn't know because it looks like an odd wrench with a gauge, but uh, that might indicate that it is for measuring torque. And these things are just real simple. You know, you just put on the fastener and we'll use this wrench as a fastener and as you torque, the needle will move. What's surprising is even at, you know, just a few foot pounds, uh, you're putting, or I'm ending up putting quite a bit of force on this. And what's surprising about that is that when people or humans in general use apply force, um, it's hard for a person to really scale very well. Oftentimes people over torque small, fa really small fasteners such as on bicycles, get about the right amount of torque on fasteners such as, you know, 10 millimeter head bolts, even some 12 millimeter head bolts. Uh, that would be the size of the socket that you would use. And then as you get the larger fasteners, such as lug nuts and, and things like that, oftentimes humans apply too little torque. And that's a nice thing about using torque wrenches and kind of really nice about these deflecting beams because they're an analog needle. So they're just reading immediately as you're applying your torque. You can see if you accidentally over torque or if you didn't quite hit the number. You don't have that sudden release of a you know a click type torque wrench click types are awesome um but if you use one of these against a clip type and you're able to look at the scale uh squarely you'll find that they're actually really easy and quick to use and as you get used to torquing things what's nice is that you can feel how much force you really need to put on something to actually achieve even 50 foot pounds or 60 foot pounds a lot of times it's kind of surprising that really starts becoming apparent as you work on high torque fasteners, such as sub chassis bolts. I've worked on Subarus. I had sub chassis bolts that were torqued to 180 foot pounds. Uh, a few months ago, replaced a half axle on a BMW, I believe is an XI, one of the all wheel drive BMW sedans. And the front hub nuts on those are torqued to 300 foot pounds. And we used a, a huge four foot long torque wrench, and it took two people. And I was pressing on the handle, and I had to put a lot of force on the handle of a four-foot-long wrench just to apply 300 foot-pounds. So it was real surprising. It was way more than what you really needed to for, say, a lug nut or something like that. Even though, kind of in your mind, three times didn't seem that much, in reality, it's a huge difference. Anyway, that was the end of this kind of quick review and comparison, just showing different styles of deflecting beam torque wrenches and some of the different features. One last thing to mention, such as this torsion, if you get one that has a wide range, like this 150 foot-pounds, you do take away something, such as each of the little tick marks on this represent five foot-pounds of force. So it's uh, it can be a little hard to read. That's what's nice about having one that just goes to zero to, say, 100 foot-pounds, is each of the tick marks is still five foot-pounds on this, but there's just a lot more space around it, so it's much easier to hit uh, just right on that number. So that's one thing that kind of keep aware of. And then for small values, I find that actually I use the quarter inch the most, particularly when it comes to bicycles and other small items like that. It's real nice just to have a small little torque wrench uh, just to apply those tiny values. Anyway, uh, it's the end of another Caddis Maximus video. I uh, really appreciate everybody watching and please subscribe. Caddis Maximus out.